Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's time for faith art journaling. There we go. It was like I changed the hour really quick and oh, I went too far. That's right. And good morning. How about that time change? I hate it. <laughs> it I gets like it. so quick, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. I hate it. Yes. Yeah. How do you change the clock back? one hour and then it seems like it's three hours darker <laughs> i know Eric, my husband was saying the same thing yesterday it was so funny it, how does like, that happen it's a little unsettling yeah oh for sure. sure yeah but we were all like ready for bed like at eight we're like wait what <laughs> <laughs> the same thing happened to us as well yeah. but good morning ladies and as you can hear we have fallen back right in time and um, we're just excited to be here to share our love for the Lord, our love for art, and our love for each other through Faith Art Journaling. Um, my name is Genevieve, and I've got Annabelle next to me, that way, and Barb. Yes. And we're here to just inspire you and encourage you as we uh, go to the Lord and seek his wisdom and his scripture and share some fun art techniques, right, so that we can do some faith art journaling and we've been lately just focusing on getting to know Jesus. So we're journaling to know Jesus. And in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about their flight to Egypt. So lots of fun to have and some interesting discussions and different supplies that we'll be sharing and techniques. So grab some, grab a pencil, some crayons or something, whatever you've got. And let's go before the Lord and have some fun, right? Yeah, let's do yeah. it. All right. All right. So those of you in uh, Florida and the Caribbean islands, uh, definitely sending prayers out your way with some weather uh, headed our way too. Yes. And uh, we just pray for everybody's safety and what a great time to do more art journaling, right? Cause when it's raining outside, it's so much fun to be stuck inside and, and have to color and draw, you know, what a problem, right? I right. know, right? <laughs> it's time to when it's raining out or something. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's a great way to spend your time and also to relax because a lot of us as women, we carry a lot of anxiety because we tend to, to worry about everybody and everything because of the responsibilities that we have and the love that we have for others. So this is very therapeutic as we're reminded to let go and let God and to trust in God. And we're actually going to talk more about that as we get into today's lesson, Flights to Egypt. So I want to invite you to join us. Uh, Tuesday mornings live at 9 a.m., YouTube and Facebook. And we have a wonderful video library in both of those uh, social media uh, streaming services. And you can always go back and watch a replay if you miss us live. And we'd love to hear from you. And if you have any questions, uh, be sure to direct message us and we'll be happy to help you with whatever we can. But we just look forward to sharing this time with each other and with you all. And we invite you to to join us now in a moment of prayer, asking for God's guidance. So let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you so much for allowing us the gift of waking up this morning and to see the sun and for our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our bodies to be able to move, dear Lord, the blessings that we take for granted so often, dear Lord. We just thank you for that. We ask that you please encourage every woman that's going to be listening to this or every young lady that will be hearing this, dear Lord. May you fill their heart with joy and happiness and the love of Jesus, dear God. Help us to get closer to you as we discuss your word. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So how are you ladies doing this morning? Good. 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 Wonderful. Wonderful. Be sure to say hello. Um, Leslie, I see you joined us. Good morning. I hope you're, you're ready to join us with just a little therapeutic and some fun time of discussion of God's word and today flight to Egypt. So every week we talk about a different section of the Bible and we'll have like one key verse. And I usually start off with a question to kind of just get you thinking, right? So today's question is going to be, how does Mary and jo Joseph respond to the Lord? Because we've been talking about Jesus and from the very beginning, we've talked about how he existed before everything with God as part of the Trinity, right? So the first verse was in the beginning. That was our first lesson. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then we had a fun party, right? Like Annabelle waiting for some grandbabies. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, but she's waiting for a girl. 
<laughs> and it says, but the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. Thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. What a beautiful blessing that was as they trusted in the Lord. And even late in their age, they were able to bear a, a child. There's so many miracles and blessings that God yes. provides. And in my own life, I know I've experienced them. And like me, I'm sure so many of you have struggled with heartache, with health problems, with a close loved ones. And you may have been in a moment that you think it's all over. Like, I can't get through this. I can't do this. And you know what? The bad news is you're right. But the good news is that you don't have to do it alone. With Jesus, you can, because through you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me, right? Philippians 4.13, one of my very favorite verses, and I always have it here next to me as a reminder, because we can't do it alone. But with the strength of Jesus, we can. Whatever it is that you're going through right now, he can help you and get you through that. So what a beautiful reminder that is that, no, we can't do it alone, but we're not meant to. We're meant to rely upon Jesus. So next in the story, we got to Mary being blessed, right? Because not only did Elizabeth have a baby, but Mary had the baby. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. So what did Mary do? Being young, not married, told she's going to have a baby in a time that they probably stoned her. She sang a song. And that was our next lesson, Mary's song. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior. So who here responds uh, to the Lord in that way, right? And that's part of today's lesson too, is when we discuss flight to Egypt, uh, were they obedient or did they shy away from God's instruction? And it can be, it's scary sometimes, right? To do things. A lot of times, should I take that new job? Should I move? Should my children change schools? There are big decisions in life that really impact our families, our children, and our daily lives. Absolutely. We need to be sure to go to the Lord for those answers, for that discerning wisdom, like we did wise eyes, remember? Mm -hmm. We will have a, an owl here that I haven't finished. That was so much fun, getting our, our wisdom from the Lord. And then after Mary sang that song, Jesus was born. So happy birthday, Jesus. Who doesn't love a birthday party, right? Yeah. A multitude of heavenly hosts. Luke 2, 14. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So that was a wonderful celebration. And it said, for there is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And then after Jesus was born, they were Jewish, so they were obedient in their traditions. And that's when we were talking about why do we do what we do? Why do we do the traditions that we do? Everything that we do in life should be intentional. And that's when we were reading about Jesus being presented in the temple. Now, when the day of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And then last week, wise men, wise owls. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtly to simple, to the young man, knowledge and direction. And that's where we also shared the 10 vital lessons of wisdom for children. And the first two were teach your children to fear the Lord, teach your children to guard their minds. And obviously there were eight more of those. And for more of that, check out last week's video, uh, Wise Men and Wise Owls. And that's when we were talking about the wise men going to see Jesus, okay? And that leads us to today's lesson. Because the wise men were instructed to go see Jesus. Herod sent them on a mission to go see them, right? And they were supposed to give word back to Herod right? Where baby Jesus was. He was interested in this king because, you know, Herod was king and nobody else was going to be king. So he heard about this little baby that was going to be king and uh, he wasn't too happy about that. But the wise men were wise. They did not go back and tell Herod. And Herod found out he was not happy about that. And that's where we are today is in that section of scripture. We're going to discuss more of that as we share today's lesson. Flight to Egypt, arise, 
take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word. Wow. So we got Mary and Joseph getting this news. You know, you're in danger and it's because of this baby. Get out of here. You know, God sent them specific instructions through an angel and they were obedient. They followed the Lord's instruction and they could have ditched the baby and ran, right? Like cowards, mm -hmm. but they didn't. They protected baby Jesus and they took him and they, they fled to Egypt. And that's what we want to reflect in our Bible journaling today is that flight to Egypt. So you can, you know, have fun with an airplane, make it move along your page, or have fun with different Egyptian icons, just so that your mindset is about going to Egypt. And that's what I'm going to share with you in some artwork now. But so often, you know, in life, we're faced with a, a, a decision that, you know, are we going to endure persecution? Or are we going to abandon our mission? You know, just this morning, Annabelle, Barb, and I were faced with the decision. Do we do faith or journaling? A lot of people are prepping for this storm to come. Uh, we all have busy lives. You know, we have responsibilities, jobs, and different things pulling us in different directions. But everything in life is a conscious decision. And we need to live our life intentionally for the Lord. He has done so much for us. How can we not do what we can for him, right? Right. Our whole purpose is to praise him and we can only get to know him better if we grow in his word. And that's what we try to do here each and every week is read some scripture, get to know more about God, fill ourselves up with some more wisdom or actually it's knowledge until we use it. Right. Because what good is learning all this knowledge if we don't apply it to our lives? And that's where our wisdom comes into play. And the Holy Spirit in our hearts can, and in our minds can help us to discern what's right and what's wrong and what are the true instructions <laughs> that God has for our lives. So I invite you now to join um, me for some art. I'm going to go ahead and switch over the camera so you can get busy having some fun with art as we continue to explore God's word and discuss it further. So... I started off with a little King Tut Egyptian uh, guy here, and I started to paint it. I haven't finished. And I always encourage you, use good paper, because if you don't use good paper, a lot of times it'll bleed. It'll The paper will just fall apart if it's too wet. And today I'm working a lot with watercolor. I did a little bit of acrylic, and I'll point that out. But these are great mixed media. Honestly, I get the ones that are on sale. I'm not too faithful when it comes to my paper. As long as it's mixed media or watercolor paper, a lot of times they're buy one, get one half off. Right, mm -hmm. Annabelle and Barb? Like Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can always work. Because they have to say like mixed media or watercolor because some of them yeah. say they're sketchbooks. See, this yours says um, watercolor. Mine is mixed media. Yep. So, because sometimes I just have one that's like sketching yeah. or drawing, mm -hmm. and that won't hold your wet stuff, your wet mediums. It's true. And yeah. they come in all oh. different sizes. And they look alike. You just yeah. have to read what it says because they all look alike. It's true. In the beginning, that confused me. Mm -hmm. You can use a paper, or you can use it in an actual journal. And they have them. Uh, all different, you know, ring bound tablets. There's just so many different ones. It's a matter of what works best for you. And one good thing about doing the, the journal part is that if you have a journal and you decorate the outside, you can leave it out on a coffee table and it gives you like an opportunity for some conversation. Uh, it's an easy and great way to spread God's word. So this is just a little reflection of some that we did before. And I have this one in a, in a notebook that's a little bit bigger. But today we're flying to Egypt, right? <laughs> Let's fly to Egypt. Yeah. Yep. Even though there were planes at that time, if you want to draw a plane, go for it. It's all about just reflecting in God's word. So I encourage you to get a good pencil. I love um, these pencils, the Taiken I don't know if I said <laughs> that right. But anyways, they come in these fun fluorescent colors and just regular pencil colors. And I find that they erase and draw really well. And I always hold my pencil sideways so that I can lightly sketch until I'm happy. And then I go erasing until it kind of takes the shape and form. And I'll be happy to walk you through uh, this guy in just a moment. 
Another, and then I'm, I'm watercoloring it, as you can see here next to us, was working on that this morning. Another idea are the pyramids. Cute. So to do a pyramid, basically it's a triangle, which is so easy, right? And after you do the triangle, all you do is you add an extra line to the back and do an angled line up. Now the key is if you're doing more than one pyramid, these angled lines have to be the same. So this secondary line to give it the 3D effect, and this one has to be at the same angle. Mm. If not, it'll look weird. Yeah, I think so, that's where I go wrong. Yeah, it's very common. It, it's happened to me a bunch of times too, if I'm in a hurry or not paying attention. But with 3D effects, it's all in your angles. So you want the same angle here as here as here for that secondary line. So basically you can draw the three triangles, three triangles, and then that secondary line afterwards, just make sure that's in the same angle. And then think about where the light is hitting. Wherever you have the light hitting, you want it to be lighter, and then you shade in the darker areas where there isn't light. And that's another little trick that gives things a little bit of depth and dimension. And I use all different types of mediums when I'm working. The blue was watercolor. And then the yellow was some acrylic as well as the brown. Um, for the this light brown, I used this acrylic paint. And once again, I buy what's on sale, what's accessible. And it's, it's good to explore different things because then you find out what's your favorite. And this one has a little bit of a shimmer too that I'm going to use for the Egyptian guy. The Egyptian part... This is fun if you like sparkles and glittery or metal. Yeah, you can put little gems, little gems on his yep. hair or hat, whatever that is. Exactly. Yellow parts. <laughs> yeah, on his headdress, you can put all sorts yeah. of fun. Little uh, sequins. Yep. You can get sequins at the dollar store. They have a lot of those. Put that, little glitter, mm -hmm. sprinkly things, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. You know what we haven't used um, in a while, Jeannie, is um, um, chalk. Like yeah, you right. have the stuff. Chalk is so easy to work with. You can make the sun yeah. out of chalk, even the background. I think we kind of forget to use it sometimes because we love the watercolors so much. You're right. And it's it's easy to use. It comes in a palette, just similar to the watercolor one. And you can do a lot with that. And you can even erase it. You're absolutely you know, right. We haven't done anything with chalk yeah, at all. So time. chalk is a good one to, to use if you're a newbie. Um, here I'm going to be adding some yellow rays to the sun. Um, I'm going to be using, you know, you can use a credit card, an old, you know, room key or something to do like straight yellow lines. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be using the end of this sponge brush because I don't know if you can tell there. It's got like a very pointy. There we go. You can see there. It has a very pointy straight edge. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go like this to put lines and just, you know, kind of streak some lines mm -hmm. to make rays. And then the other thing I, I had was a camel. Hmm. And um, I, to be honest with you, it, if you have a good pencil and patience, if you take your time and just shape things little by little, you can draw it, Annabelle. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can't draw it. Yes, you can. And especially if you can copy something. Yeah. So to get you going, first of all, what are you guys going to do? Annabelle. Well, I'm going to do some, some, I'm going to show you a little technique with paper and ripping paper. You know, I, I always like to tone it down a little bit and, and do it a little simple. So, <laughs> and I'm going to show some techniques with tearing paper and make some, um, you know, some sand or some little, what do you call those? Not mountains. Uh, Hills, you know. pyramids. Well, yeah, little pyramids, but the sandy part, the. I'm at a loss for words. Can I do like a it's mirage? Sand dunes, like a sand dune? There. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> Love when people finish my sentences. Yes, sand dunes. Uh, that's awesome. And how about you, Barb? What are you going to do? I'm going to combine the camel with the pyramids. Ooh. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. So Etching it out right now. And, oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. Like you did. Yeah. Okay, so sorry to the camel part. Um, whenever I'm drawing something, I always draw like for me the focal point. Like for me, the camel, it's his hump. So I started honestly with with, with his hump part because to me, where he was gonna sit there, that was the most important thing. 
and then that long skinny neck. And that's how I started. For me, that was the easiest thing. And then he has, you know, the skinny neck that kind of droops down. And then his head was, in general, it's kind of like a big, you know, rectangle, like a big um, oval kind of thing. So I kind of started off like that. And then what I did was I arched it up to make it a little taller. Mm -hmm. And as I arched it up, I go erasing the inner lines. And if you look, it's already starting to look like a camera. Yeah. I think that's yeah. the key, the doing it. I always forget that part. Making your circles that you know. Yeah. Your shapes that you know, common shapes. Around. Yeah. It's a big general shape, and you mm -hmm. go fine-tuning it, like you're sculpting yeah. it. Yeah. So then here, his nose kind of sticks out a little bit. So I kind of arched it out. And then as I arch this this way, and look. No, you're right. See? Yeah. And the camel on the left there looks like he's been working out. He's got some big thighs. He's buff. <laughs> All right. Is anybody else thinking about how amazing is our God to make these creatures that are so cool and unique? Yeah, right. And nice? Right, a horse with humps on it, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, you can put a million things on its back and they can carry you where you want to go. Like, yeah, I know. Absolutely. absolutely. Who needs an airplane? Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. That, that is, is true. amazing. <laughs> Love it. And then you just start doing the details little by little and go racing the lines. You did the little ears there. And then for me, the hardest part were his legs. Yeah. So I don't know how many joints they have. I kind of just did what kind of made sense for me and um, did the back part here, which I know I made him a little too buff last time, but you know, he had a long walk. Okay. But, and then they, you know, they end up with little skinny feet. So that's an important thing. Yeah. You know, and then. The, the leg closest to you is like that, and then you do the belly, and then you draw the leg that's on the other side, and that also gives it dimension. You know, so make that look so easy. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be perfect, it has to give an idea exactly. You know, and notice I didn't draw the whole camel. Yes, I was just gonna say that. I love when you do that, it's a part of it. Yes. <laughs> I, I hear you. Remember, I didn't go to school for the whole deal. <laughs> I didn't go to school for this. Oh, and, and the, oh, I forgot the eyeball there. There you go. Look at Sally that. Camels. And there we have Sally the camel. Yeah, right? I like it. <laughs> and then the little, yeah. So, has anybody ridden on a camel? Oh, I have not. Have you guys? Never I have. No? You did it? No, I've never done it. A zoo one time. Oh, oh yeah. I don't never, remember. Doing you that. rode on one, Jeannie? Yeah, <laughs> a zoo one time. Oh, my gosh. Well, camel-wise, that's it. And don't forget, I'm going to go back to the pyramids, that it's pretty much a triangle first, and then that back angle has to be the same. And make the part that is in the shadow darker than the part that's getting hit with light. And then the the pharaoh guy here, uh, kind of, you know, this one, I did like a big U for the face. Mm -hmm. Once you do the U for the face, <clears throat> sure that it's, notice I go over and over until I get lines mm -hmm. that I like. Because at first one side was fatter than the other. And then it kind of worked out. And then this top part gives me kind of a guide. So that you can have a perspective for the eyes and the rest of the part. Um, for the ears, I'm gonna forget when I did this one. I did this ear huge. I had to go back like three times and fix the ear. <laughs> and you know, we want it to look a little manly, so we don't want it to look too too feminine. If you're making a guy here. I am. You can make a a woman Egyptian if you care to. But either way, they had a whole lot of bling. And then whenever I'm doing a face, I think that the hardest part, and but most importantly, is the nose to have a, as a guide. 
And even if you change what it looks like, just knowing where it is gives you a reference point so that you can do the eyes. And remember when you're doing the eyes, you don't want to do them solid. You need to leave some white there and around the, the colored part of the eye as well as inside the eye. And if you don't remember to, you could always add it on with a paint marker. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. And I think that the hardest thing is to make them the same. This guy looks a little angry, so I gotta soften this up. Got a few little eyelashes and then the eyebrows. And then the mouth was for me was kind of hard to make it not too feminine. So by rounding off the edges. I think that that helped instead of making them pointy because a lot of times we make them really pointy. But I think you can kind of get the idea of the Egyptian guy coming and then the famous long neck that we can do lots of ornate, you know, gold bands and necklaces and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And that the headdress, um, I put a little mark on each side and kind of just went completely around. And after I went completely around from those two points, then I just went in a little bit, in a little bit, and then down. And then this is, I think, one of the most important part to give the headdress a pretty effect is going like a big open V right on the forehead. And that sets the center stage right there in the beginning of see the nose, the mouth. You know, typically if they're you're really taking a drawing class, they have you do a big cross so that everything is symmetrical. Uh, we're not that much into specific instructions because we're here to encourage you and inspire you. And there's no right or wrong way to do uh, faith art journaling, right? Yep. And then with the headdress, you start off with those angles. And then as soon as you get to a horizontal line, you stick to the horizontal line. And that was the idea with that. And now it's kind of ready to add some watercolor. And then I'll obviously outline it with Sharpies, which I love. They have the super skinny ones, which are great. And then they have the fatter ones. And they even have this fatter one that's got a skinny side, too. Ooh, double whammy. Yeah, that one's pretty cool. So hopefully that gives you some art ideas uh, so that you can get working on that. I'm going to switch my camera and I'm going to give Annabelle and Barb a little more time to get prepared to share what they've got going on. And while they're doing that, I'm going to dive into some scripture. So today's lesson, we're going to be reading from Matthew 2, 13 to 21. And as we read this, I want you to be reflecting upon how does Mary and Joseph respond to the Lord? Now, something I didn't add to these pages yet, because I'm not done, is a biblical reference. So either write the whole Bible verse or write a part of the Bible verse, or uh, in, in this one with the pyramids, I actually put Matthew 2.13, and that was it. So I had a reference point to what part of scripture this was reflecting upon. So I encourage you not to stress out about writing the whole Bible verse. You can write a, a title, but make sure that you do put a reference. So if you want to go back and reflect more, you'll be able to without wondering, wait, what were we talking about that day? Mm -hmm. you know, we got lots of squirrels in our lives, right? Yeah. just a few. <laughs> <laughs> And Emma, always joking around about that. We're like squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> all the distractions that we have. And Satan, if he can't get us to sin horribly, what is he going to do? He's going to distract us or keep us busy, right? Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's go to God's word. And uh, I hope that you're enjoying uh, exploring with your art materials, whatever it is that you may have. And uh, I mean, this watercolor uh, set that I'm using, I've had like for forever. And it was like super cheap. 
in uh, Michael's or Joanne's. I don't even remember. But you could also use food coloring. You can use your kids' leftover crayons. When you get your child new supplies for school, keep the old ones, whatever. Um, invest in sales. Or when Christmas comes around or Mother's Day, I I'll never forget, I asked for um, watercolor pencils for Christmas. I got a pack of like 100 something. It was amazing. I thought I'd win the lot. It was so much fun. <laughs> But these are wonderful consumable items that help, can help us grow in our faith. It's very relaxing. You can do this with a group of girlfriends at any time. Start your own Bible study group, Sunday school, ladies ministry, youth group. This is so applicable to anything. So without any further ado, let's dive into Matthew 2. And it says, now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod. That it may be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, out of Egypt, I called my son. And all that's from Matthew 2, 13 to 15. Now, one part that we didn't read there, that is the next uh, section in scripture in this story is what happened to Herod before he died. What did he do? Anybody remember that part? It's the master of the innocence. And right after um, out of Egypt, I called my son in the Bible. It continues. Mm -hmm. it and it says, then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men. Remember, because they were wise. They didn't tell Herod where baby Jesus was because Herod wanted to <laughs> baby Jesus. So he sent forth and put to death all male children who were in Bethlehem and all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time, which we ha he had determined from the wise men, then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah, the prophet, saying, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Now, when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother and came to the land of Israel. And we'll talk more about that next week, that part. But wow, Herod was so mad by being deceived by the wise men and not being able to find out where Jesus was, this one baby that was going to be king, that he sent all the, the young males under the age of two to be killed. Can you imagine what a massacre of innocence? And that's what it's referred to. That's how irate Herod was. What a horrible king. And it for me, it just re reminds me of how much pride, how evil pride can be. He was a king. He wanted to be in charge. He felt threatened. Do you know of anybody like that in the world today? It's everywhere. Oh, all of us. In charge, yeah. pride, authority. Everybody wants it. And if you don't have it, you're going to fight for it. And once you get it, you'll do anything that you can to keep it. Yep. You know, and it's an evil downfall. We need to remember that and be aware of it so that we don't get caught up in our own pride. But, you know, how beautiful was Mary and Joseph that they were obedient to the Lord, even though they know they were putting themselves at risk by keeping this baby Jesus that biologically wasn't theirs. You know, it was from the Lord, but they were faithful from the very beginning, even though it was out of wedlock. You know, it was the Immaculate Conception and they were obedient regardless of what society and what their families and what everybody told them or did. Doesn't everybody have an opinion? Anybody yeah. have a of anybody that's had a baby out of wedlock, a young, you know, mom that had a oops, a surprise, uh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it, unfortunately, you know, it happens. And 
they were obedient and they followed the Lord's instructions. And that's what, you know, we need to reflect upon when we see flight to Egypt, they were ready to go. And it's not like nowadays that we can uh, call Uber to take us someplace <laughs> or, you know, we can go to kayak and get the best flight deal to go wherever, you know, we're very comfortable in today's society. But back then they didn't know where their next meal was going to come from, their next glass of water. You know, here we are with Yetis and coolers and and uh, dispensing machines everywhere. Mm -hmm. I saw a dispensing machine this last weekend for cupcakes. Oh, gosh. Fresh cupcakes. They looked amazing. Can you imagine that? A fresh yeah. cupcake in, in a, you know. They have them for food, too, for pizza, a lot of things. Right, right. Places. For meals. It's true. <laughs> yeah. They, they took a leap of faith is what they did. A they really did in obedience. Yeah. And I encourage you to mm -hmm. seek God's, you know, wisdom and God's instruction in your life through prayer and through filling yourself with the Holy Spirit so that you can have his guidance and his discernment in your life. And may we be obedient to the Lord in all our decisions and in our lives and in the direction that we go to and what we do. May we be intentional to praise him and glorify him. And a little more information about this is that the context of this verse speaks of the relationship the Lord had with the nation of Israel. The Lord loved Israel as expressed in Exodus 4, 22, 23, and he rescued the people from slavery under Pharaoh, bringing them into the promised land. The analogy is that of God as the father and Israel as the child. And I got that from gotquestions.com. I just found it really interesting. And in summary, Hosea 11, 1 says it's not a messianic prophecy in the same way that prophecies such as Isaiah 9, 6 are. Rather, it's a pictorial prophecy. That is, there are similarities in the Old Testament passage to a New Testament truth about Christ. This is an Old Testament picture of Christ called a type. Matthew 2.15 can be seen as an analogy. And Matthew is providing a connection between Jesus and God's people of promise. As a Jew writing for primarily Jewish readers, Matthew found it important to point out many of the similarities between the nation of Israel and their Messiah, the one to fulfill the prophets. Hosea 11.1 1 prophecy says, when Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. How beautiful is that? How there are so many, you know, prophecies and fulfillments in the Bible. It's filled with truth. And that expression, the proof is in the pudding, you know, <laughs> the New Testament is delicious with truth. That is fulfillment of prophecies that the Old Testament was, was talking about. So today I encourage you all as we continue to, to share art and discuss this, is how are you going to follow the example of Mary and Joseph and be obedient to the Lord in your life? So hopefully you have lots to think about in today's uh, lesson and as we reflect on you know the flight to Egypt and their obedience. And uh, even though they knew that they could possibly die because they were with Jesus, or, you know, the possible persecution that they could experience, they were faithful and obedient to the Lord. And we need to do the same thing in our lives too. You know, have you ever been someplace and you keep your mouth shut about being a Christian? You know, you hear people talking things against God and you just keep your mouth shut. You know, that's still wrong. If we don't stand up for our Lord, you know, that's still wrong. You know, even though we're not the ones saying it, we're just as guilty as being, you know, full of that sin that's going against the Lord. But in fear of persecution, they're going to judge us. Maybe they won't be our friend. Maybe we won't be invited around, you know, any longer or whatever the reason may be. But share God's word. But just share it in a loving way with the love of Jesus as truth. Remember, by putting on the belt of truth, it's not our responsibility to prove the truth. God's word speaks for itself. It's a living word of God. All we have to do is lead them in that direction and let the Holy Spirit and God do their thing. That's not on us because they have the power. We don't. It's the Holy Spirit within us that gives us power. But uh, let's go to some art and see what you got going on. Annabelle, would you like to share first? Sure. I did. Okay, so. <clears throat> How pretty. You, wait, this is this way. Sorry, I'm in a different location today. So. <laughs> Bear with me. Um, You're doing great. You're doing great. 
Right. <laughs> I put my glasses. So, anyways, um, I'm seriously trying to move the computer when I can just move my. my <laughs> wow, that was a blonde moment there. Um, <laughs> okay, so I'm usually you know doing things a little bit easier. So I did a sun. So here's my sun, and it's always upside down. I'm not sure why, but here's my sun that I just drew. Basically, I took some of my ink pads, you know, various colors, and I just started kind of just drawing it, okay? Outline, that's a, that's an easy one. So now I'm going to make a little bit of pyramids. I'm going to do them the easy way because I want you to see them like from afar. Um, not Jeannie's beautiful, giant, perfect <laughs> pyramid. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. So I found some little triangles, a little foam stamp that I had hidden away somewhere. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just do a couple of these. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take my pad and I'm just gonna go like this and, you know, stamp a few just so I can get some ink on there. And I'm gonna go like this and stamp them. They're not perfect by all means but I'm just making some little pyramids so you can see them from afar, okay? I'm gonna make some more here. I'm gonna make uh, maybe a different color. I'll do, I don't know, these are a little darker. I'm gonna do it on this side. So I'm just making a few pyramids here. I'll do some on this side, okay? And you'll see where I'm going with this. Here's some other pyramids. Okay, so then I won't keep going. What I'm going to do is just get some paper, like the sand dunes, different color, and I'm going to rip it like I did this one. And I'm going to, let's see, put this one here. And you can see the pyramids in the back. And I'll go ahead and turn the cam the thing around. Take another one, <clears throat> another color. I'm just going to rip it. And... I take my little ink pad. I don't know if this one's going to show. Okay, there it goes. Ink the edges so you can get a little bit of a feel of the difference in depth. You know, just. Then I'm going to put this one down here. Okay. You see where I'm going with this? How it's starting to look a little bit like. Um, sand dunes. Yeah, sand dunes. Yeah. I'm going to rip another one here, do the same thing here, and I'm going to do a lighter one, and then I'm going to do this, and again, I'm doing this a little fast for time purposes, then I'm going to put this here, and basically, I need to put one here, see, so you can't. I mean, you just got to play with it, you know, put another one here so it kind of covers my dunes, I mean, my pyramids. And then I'm just going to add more pyramids here. Um, it's kind of weird looking right now, but I'm going to add more pyramids. And when you glue it down, you can add some more like here on this paper. That's and then, huge. See, you, and then you can cover some, like, you know, like you're seeing them in a distance. I've got to do the top one because I kind of did it backwards. But look where I'm going with this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you great. see that a little bit? Like the dunes. And I'm basically just using a stamp and some cardstock paper. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and then I'm going to do this part blue and keep ripping some more paper and put it on here. And then I'll show you the finished product, but I'm kind of short on time. <clears throat> so that's basically it. And these are my materials and some paper. So, and some stamps. And I'll, I'll come back and show you some more, but that's that's my easy pyramid in sand dunes. <laughs> I know, it's a great idea. Annabelle, and, and what do you think about maybe using sandpaper? Sandpaper is good. I was at, that's a great one. I hadn't thought of that. I was yeah. actually going to, 
put some glue on here and sprinkle some real sand that I have in a bottle. Sandpaper will be but so here. I'm not in my place right now, so I didn't want to make a mess. But sandpaper is a fantastic idea. I hadn't thought of that. That's wonderful. I like that. So, I just, yeah. you know, because you're right that gluing sand would make the same textured effect. Yeah. It's just, um, for me, I, it's kind of a pain. I've done it before, but like beach. Oh, yeah. It's probably. messy. It's messy. And it tends to always fall off. It's hard to get it to yes. treat it here. So you got to kind of like put liquid adhesive, put yep. the sand, and then seal it on top of that. With like, oh, my gosh. Sandpaper is amazing. You buy a real thin one and you can tear yep. it. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. And I Our think you can get that, too, at the dollar store. Sandpaper. Probably different I love dollar tree. Have different supplies. And yeah. I think it's a matter of having a mindset of, of like looking at things a little bit differently. Yeah. I was a teacher for many years. And uh, when I was first teaching, it's funny how I would look at things and I'd be like, oh, don't throw that away. I can use that. Exactly. <laughs> you have a, a different set of, you know, you have a different perspective on how you can yes. recycle or reuse yes. different things yes. for different purposes. Because yeah, I like. Like the one that we using your household stuff to make things like you yep. see a Q-tip. Oh, I can do something with I can do a lot of things with a Q-tip, you know, and things like that. Yep. Yep. What Annabelle's talking about is that we did do a whole video uh, lesson on household items, household tips. And we kind of walk you through different things that you find around your house that you can use for faith art journaling or, you know, mm -hmm. art journaling and Bible journaling. So I encourage you to check it out if you haven't, because it's a great way to save money and just be creative. Yeah. Uh, and enjoy the resources that God has given us. You know, we need to take mm -hmm. care of them, right? Absolutely. So Barb, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So I did. Um, Look at your camel. No way. So cute. Your camel and, uh, oh, he's so cute. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. And I did decide to bring out some crayons because uh, you guys brought it up. I said, I'm going to make the sun with my crayons. And I used my um, colored pencils for him. And then just a few of these um, little uh, ink pads with a little smudgy thing here, brush to put it on. So wasn't that hard. I enjoyed it. I'm still going to put a lot of the, I have to outline pretty much everything here still. So I'm working on that. Uh, yeah. But um, How did you do your pyramids? They're so pretty because I, it looks like you just kind of like, I don't know. I like, did like them the with color? my, oh, yeah, my I did it with the, <laughs> with the brush. I just brushed oh. it. Yeah. And then you put like the bricks over it. Right. Now I'm, I'm just kind of working on that. Yeah. Did you stencil the bricks on it or are you just no, freehand? No, I'm doing it? freehand. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and you know what I love? That the pyramid, the peak is going into the sun. I love it. Yeah. Well, one of uh, Genevieve's was like that. And I said, oh, I like that. I'm going to copy that. <laughs> That's amazing. It looks so pretty. I love it. Oh, thank, nice you. Camel. thank you. Right. Thank you. I have FOMO now. I need to I need to make a camel. <laughs> I'm gonna fun to draw. I gotta need to right. work on a camel. <laughs> fun to draw to you, Barb, I gotta say. I had fun with it. Yeah. Wow. The key is Annabelle, don't be in a rush. It's I about get intimidated so easily with that the drawing. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. And just have your eraser handy. Yes. <laughs> you just have to keep erasing and redrawing. I mean, it's I know. a lot of proportion, but I'm okay. She says that all the time and I forget. <laughs> You're right, Barb. You're right. Yeah. But that came out awesome. Thank wow. You. I'm impressed, you know, girl. We were talking about um, how sometimes we can be ashamed of the gospel actually listened to a good sermon this weekend, uh, this Sunday by a pastor, um, Alistair Begg, Truth for Life. And um, he was um, speaking about and preaching on Romans 16, where Paul is talking to Jewish, uh, his doing, talking to the Christian um, in Rome and um, the believers there. And he was telling them, I, for, um, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. And, uh, you know, so we, 
I guess uh, the preaching kind of can, was towards, are we convinced about the gospel, you know, so that we can share it, you know, um, are we convinced that it actually saves um, then that this salvation is enjoyed by those who appropriate the righteousness of God by faith. So um, there was, you know, quite a bit more to it, but um, he also spoke about how we are living in a culture where the prevailing winds are blowing in our face, where we are not accepted. Um, you know, their Christians are now looked down upon, whereas before we were brought to the table and people listened to what we had to say, people not as easily ready to hear what we have to say anymore. Yeah. But it's good to, um, you know, put your uh, self in the word to build your faith and uh, yeah, be able to speak the truth. Amen. Because every person, you know, that, um, I mean, we know that everybody in the world needs to hear the gospel. Yeah. So, <laughs> and yeah. Very true. So true. Wow. Very good point. And I like how you just were saying, Barb, that are we convinced? Because if you don't believe it yourself, how can you get somebody else to believe it? True. Right. You yep. know, it's so true that we need to be strong in God's word before we can really uh, share God's word. You know, it's kind of like, think about, you know, the analogy of you being a salesman for, for a company. Oh, yeah. If you don't believe in the product. How are you going to get others to believe in the product? <laughs> That's right. You know? That's right. I think yep. it's the same concept. Yeah. Obviously much more important, but. Yeah. Yes. You know, people don't want to hear that the only savior of the world is Jesus. They want to accept that there's many ways, you know, but um, so we do have a difficult message, but that shouldn't stop us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. No, it's so true. And the beauty is that, you know, God does hate uh, sin and he made a terrible punishment for sin, but he also gave us the solution. You know, there's a problem, but he gave us, a you right. know, so yeah. it's so funny, you know, a silly reminder, but my, I have a 22 year old son. I have two boys. My 22-year-old, Jason, I'm calling you out right now in front of everybody. <laughs> horrible about doing dishes. He's like, Mom, I'll do them later. I'll do them, you know, tonight. And he'll let the dishes just pile up. Right. I'm a clean-as-you-go kind of gal. <laughs> like, if you dirty a dish, it's so much easier to clean one dish. Right. Wait until you got it piled up, and then you need to clean the whole sink. And it just smells and it's unpleasant and all that. <laughs> so, you know, I was just hassling and hassling, you know, him about it. And um, it's so funny because uh, yesterday he finally, you know, did it. But yeah. um, in, in talking about, you know, things that, you know, you believe or you stand behind or whatever, you know, in his mind, that was right. And I was wrong. And he just, you know. It was hard to get him to see my point of, of view because in his mind, that was right. You know, so right. it's hard for him to be obedient because right. he didn't agree with what I was saying. He just totally yeah. looked at me from a different perspective. Right. Right. You know? But then I patiently tried to help him see my perspective. And, uh, and last night was one of the very few times that he actually did the dishes. I woke up this morning very happy. So thank you, Jason. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> But it was it was a struggle for him to understand my point of view and see it. But I was insistent and I was passionate right. because I believed that my perspective was the right one. You know, right. and how right. are we about God's word? Are we passionate about it? Are we sure it's correct? Are we sure it is truth? You know, are we sharing it? Are we really being intentional on helping others to see the truth? Not because we say it's true, it's because God's word says that it's true. And we all need to have a reference as to you know, what is true and what is not, our moral compass. And, and that's so important. 
But um, so lots to think about and lots to reflect upon. And the more that you get to know God's word, the more you get to know God and Jesus and the closer a relationship you can have with them because you have that intimacy, you know, just like the more time we spend together. Somebody that you see only on holidays or, you know, once or twice a year, you're not that close to them, right? Right. Right. But, you know, a lot of times we can say, oh, you know, I bet you Barb would do it this way or Annabelle would do it that way because we know each other for a long time already. and We have a relationship uh, with each other. And how wonderful is it to have that relationship with Jesus to be able to know, you know, what he wants us to do and what his purpose is for our life. So, yeah. Um, we were talking about sin and. uh I had this good um, quote from Pastor Bed. In salvation, we have been saved from sin's penalty. We are being saved from sin's power. And we will be one day saved from sin's presence. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, to make you laugh further about my son's Jason situation, I told him, if you're going to treat the house, you know, like a hotel, I'm going to charge you a fee. <laughs> $50 every time that you leave dishes and I got to clean them. Cleaning fee. Yeah, right. A cleaning like fee. That. Right? Yeah. You thought you were reasonable, right? I okay. think it sounds reasonable. Right. He needs to tip you as well. <laughs> yeah. Not father, you know, he, he, he hates sin. He provides a terrible place to punish it. You know, I hate the dirty dishes and I told him there's going to be a penalty. You know, it's going to be $50 every time, you know, he doesn't do the dishes, but I gave him an out. And last night I told him, listen, I really don't want to do this, but you're forcing my hand here. He's 22 years old. He's a man. And <laughs> I don't want to do this, but you're forcing my hand and there has to be a consequence. So I'm giving you an out. I'm giving you an opportunity to just right. do the dishes tonight. And that's it. And a story. We won't talk about this anymore. I won't. Okay. You know, charge you 50 bucks, take it out of your account, which I have access to. So there's not even like I have to wait for him to give it to yeah. me. Right. So, you know, with love in my heart, I was disciplining him, but giving him an out. And that's right. when I was so happy this morning. I was like, yay, he did the dishes. I didn't need to give him that consequence, you know, because right. he was obedient. You know, he right. received and accepted my disciplining and came to understand my point of view and honored me by being obedient. You know, and God, you know, it provided us an out. Yes, sin is terrible and needs to be punished. And even though we have the grace of salvation, the gift of salvation, there's still consequences to our sin, you know, and that doesn't go away. That's our own doing. But we can be forgiven through Christ Jesus, who shed his blood for all of ours. His innocent body was, all our sin was put upon it. And when he died on the cross, he died to pay for all of our sins. So, you know, God created that situation for us, but we have an out. So we have access directly to, to God because he cannot be near sin. But now we have direct access through uh, Christ Jesus to him. And we can receive the gift of eternal life to be with, you know, God forever and ever because of that gift in Christ Jesus. And uh, it just made me reflect and think about that. The fact that, you know, I gave my son an out. There was a consequence, but I gave him an out and an opportunity. Why? Because I love him. You know, how much more does our, our father love us? He created us, you know, perfectly imperfect, I always say. Because right. we're so hard on ourselves and we look at all our imperfections. You know, Annabelle, I can't draw a camel. You know, yes, you can. I, know <laughs> you do. I just have more patience or maybe I enjoy it more or maybe I have more practice you know, all in God's timing. You know, some of us do things quickly. Others of us take more time. I enjoy the process. And that's something that I realized in the very beginning, I wanted to finish something and have a beautiful end product. That's and me. Yeah, I want quick results. It's not about that. It's not instantaneous. For me, it's about the journey. Yeah. It's about enjoying the process, <laughs> reflecting in God's word and the time that we're spending here together with one another. For me, that's where I find the value. So you can start off with, you know, the King Tut. I already added some color and I added some shimmer there on the neck. I'm going to add more jewels. Ooh. I'll <laughs> some pictures later. And um, uh, still the flight to Egypt pyramid. 
Um, let me show you what I was going to do with that one really quick as we wrap things up, because I had mentioned that I would uh, show a little bit of some sun rays there. And um, sorry, I'm having difficulty switching my camera. There we go. Too many little buttons on the computer. So with this, I first painted yellow and then I added a little bit of this shimmer to it because I wanted the sun to be a little bright. So the rays, I think I would do the same thing, possibly both of them. I have a nonstick pad here. It's similar to like a silk pad. pad. And actually, I think I'll need a more. And if you want to use a little bit of paint or you want it to be lighter, you can always get a little bit of water and spritz it there so that it'll be uh, more opaque. You know, it won't be so dense. And you can kind of just add a little water there and then i got my little sponge brush here and i'm just dipping the corner see and with that corner i'm going to kind of just look how easy <coughs> and then you can do shorter ones longer ones and since the middle is the same color it's okay if i go over it but look that one little detail look how cute that came out yeah i love it it's a pop yeah, yeah. Something so simple just really did a lot for that. And while I have that yellow out, I could go ahead and use it here on this one as well and just paint the background. And that's something that I do like about doing more than one page at a time is that you can kind of uh, take advantage of the paint and not waste it. If you do go it back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go back and forth. It's true. So I'm erasing a little bit of my pencil mark there. And if you want to make it lighter... You can even put water on your paper first and it'll water it down even more so. And you can kind of, for here, I'm just going to do a lot of yellow because I want to make it like the sun is really shining out from this one. And just be careful that the layers dry in between one another because if not, then you end up smearing uh, colors. And once you're all done, once again, you can outline with some uh sharpie and you can do a little reflection there and i'm going to add a little bit of, of blue there afterwards so i think you see where i'm going with this and i always love to use wipes and once they dry, dry out i just dip them in water and still use them i've had these a little too long and didn't close them up right i hate when that happens and then your wipes are all dry right <laughs> if you dip them in water you could still use them yeah and this mm -hmm. yellow I can use still to make tags or other embellishments if you have any little scraps around you can use it as a as a background even a different page like my owl i can add a little bit of yellow here and afterwards finish it and uh just make use of your look how i added water there and it really will lighten it up and it's great for backgrounds. I love to do a lot of background pages and then have them ready. And then it's a quick way of just adding something to it. And it's also great to use cards. When you have a lot of scraps, uh, I learned that at a scrapbook convention one time, they said, whenever you do a scrapbook page, you have these odd scraps to keep them and use them to make a card or a tag. Remember, Annabelle, I think I was with you when we started learning that long ago probably yeah i use scraps for a lot of things right yeah maybe to do punches and stuff like that yeah a tag for you know you get a little lunch mm -hmm. bag for a present and you can easily make a tag mm -hmm. yeah. but look how quickly and easily i did this background and now i can add some rays or clouds or layers are so much fun i think that it just gets a lot of depth to whatever it is that we're doing yeah. So I think that we gave you a ton of different ideas. Yes. Have fun exploring them. And you can have fun with your camel, your pyramid, you know, a pharaoh, a Egyptian princess, <laughs> whatever it is that you would like to do and that will help you to remember flight to Egypt when Mary and Joseph were obedient, right? Uh, regardless of the possibilities of persecution. So any last words, ladies, before we call it a day? Don't get bullied. Follow <laughs> your heart. 
Amen. And follow him. <laughs> I love that. I love mm-hmm. that. Don't let yourself be bullied. You yeah. can be bullied in many different ways. It's not just when you think of bullying, you think of a kid in school. It's so true. Oh, so, right. yeah. right. so show the love of Jesus to family member or friend today. Um, mm-hmm. Your heart will be joyful for it. Yep. It's Amen. voting day, so there's going to be a lot of uh, crazy out there today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I almost choked. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and everything. Um, I would actually like to close in a special prayer regarding that being election day. Um, we don't talk politics. We only talk Jesus here. And uh, we just pray for peace and for God's guidance for everybody. And may we respect each other's differences, yes. you know, exercise our right to vote and uh, follow the Lord and not worry so much about following mankind. Uh, whoever may be in authority. We are to respect them, as the Bible says, and uh, move forward, right? In obedience, uh, but focusing on being obedient to the Lord, most importantly. Yes. So uh, as we wrap things up, I want to remind you, like Barb was saying, how are you going to follow the example of Mary and Joseph and be obedient to the Lord? Follow the great commission of spreading his word. And uh, join us next week when the family returns home. So next week's theme will be like home sweet home when they're going to be returning to home. And we'll talk more about that part of Jesus's life as we journal to know Jesus. So I invite you to join me in a, in a very special prayer today being election day. Uh, let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for the opportunity that we have, dear Lord, to have the freedom to discuss your word. May we continue to grow closer to you. And we ask for Uh, our hearts to be filled with wisdom and courage, dear Lord, to share your word with others so that they can have the, the peace that surpasses all understanding that we have, dear Lord, in our hearts. May the world listen to you, dear Lord, and go for your guidance and respect one another in these challenging times that are to be coming with our economy and the election chaos and so much division, dear Lord. Help people to remember that they're human and we all live under the same a beautiful heaven, dear Lord, and that you created us all uh, perfectly imperfect, dear Lord. May we love each other, respect each other, encourage each other. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So yes, have a wonderful week. We'll look forward to next week, Home Sweet Home. So think cute houses and hearts and all that family, (laughs) fun, loving stuff. And have a great week and be safe out there with the storm, ladies. Yes. 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 Have a great week, everyone. Yes, yes. And be sure to follow us on social media. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll be alerted to new videos as they become available. And uh, please just like and share our our videos on social media. And I encourage you, if you're stuck at home with some bad weather, as long as you've got internet, go back Mm -hmm. to the videos and you can replay them and go through other lessons and get different ideas or rewatch these or share them with other people or go through the photos. We have lots of different ideas out there. We'll get your craft on, people. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, guys. Awesome. Have a great day. Love you, ladies. Love Love you. you. Bye. Bye.